Amen. Amen. Who's the center of your joy? Let me hear you. Who's the center of your joy? Jesus is the center of our joy. And today he's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. We thank and praise God for being alive. We thank and praise God for being blessed. We thank and praise God for who he is. And today we are to give God the highest praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you that are able to stand, we ask that you stand to your feet at this time. As you're standing, continue to let's praise God and praise God. Praise God. For he's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. I will call to worship on today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms 150, and it reads, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence and greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We ask that you join in with this song. Let your voices be heard. Let God know that you're praising him today. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray.
Deacon Shannon, and member bless the service on this morning. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come once again into your presence. And Lord, this morning, we want you to fill us, Lord. Touch us with your finger of love. Let us feel your presence in the service this morning. Bless each and every one, every household that is here. Bless this great congregation that's come before you, O Lord God, that we could hear a word from you. O Lord, bless our pastor as he come with the living word. Give him what he need to stand, what he need of, Lord, to deliver it unto your people. And we so be so grateful, so honor, O Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just allow us to come. That we are here, O oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and truth. Oh Lord, be just grateful now. Hallelujah. Lord, that you touch us so many times with our healing. Lord, you, you, you bless us so many times. Hallelujah. That we be able to move our limbs, O oh Lord. And now, O oh God, we like to say thank you for all. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. that you look to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading we're coming from the book of 2 Peter, third chapter, and we'll read verses 10 through 14. 2 Peter 3, verses 10 through 14. And these words are recorded. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away, and with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening, until the coming of the Lord, and to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blame. Amen. We thank God for the reading of the word, and we thank God for the spirit of this service. 
And we ask that you continue to put yourselves in the service. The song that is a, that the uh, ensemble is about to sing is Hallelujah, you worthy to be praised. So we ask that you join in, and after that you will hear none other than our pastor, Elder William E. Smith. Let's see them both the words of thank you, Jesus. your hands together. together. is worthy if God is worthy won't you clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you
his face. I to pray. I'm not talking about 282 progressive way. I'm thinking that home that God has prepared for his people. And if you're going, let's act like we're going this morning. Come on, give God the praise. If you're going to see the king, we thank God for his blessings upon us today. Another day, it's another day that the Lord, it's another day that the Lord has me. And everybody get really glad about that. Just to scream as high you can. Say, Lord, I'm thankful. It's another day that you've blessed us. It is so good to be back in the house of prayer once again. And those of you who are watching by Facebook Live, we thank you for joining us this morning as well. Subject this morning is simple, unshakable things. Say it with me, unshakable things. Amen. In the second book of Peter, chapter 3, he says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in that are therein shall be burned up. Amen. Amen. When I was young, er, I grew up in a church back in the day that would sing songs that stirred something deep down on the inside. And one of them songs was it's another day that the Lord. So it's something about that song that stirred us up. Now, we got this new stuff. I'm not against it, but, but what we used to sing, uh, uh, prayer, prayer, Lord. I hear you over there, Mama. Prayer, prayer, Lord. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Prayer, Lord. Prayer, Lord. Now, this was before Kirk Franklin. This was before the Canton Spirituals. This was before you and I even came along. But there was something about the songs that we sang that would stir up the deepest part of our souls. Many of us in this area, we came from the cotton field, the watermelon patch, I was just thinking about it that day, Sister, Sister, Sister Hamilton, this week. Amen. Out there, Route 1, it's called Bow River Road now. It was 100 degrees in the shade. We were out there picking watermelons and cantaloupes. Amen. Prayer, Lord, change things. 
Amen. And then around about August, September, it was time for cotton picking time. Amen. And we had to go pick cotton, then go to school. Somebody said, God is still a good God. And we had, we seemed like when we had less, we were happier people. But now that we have all that we have, it's hard to even, when you come in the house of prayer, even to muster up an amen. Or muster up a thank you, Lord. Or lift your hands and say, I want to worship you, Lord. Without somebody prying you. I see some of y'all holding your hands still. Amen. Some of you were at your death's door. Amen. The doctors came in and said, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you're still here. And somebody ought to cry out hallelujah this morning. We used to sing this song, these songs that would express the deepest sentiment of our hearts toward God. They helped us in our time of trouble. Songs like, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Y'all remember that? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this Jesus journey. Please, Savior, walk. Walk with me. There were times we were low in spirit. Our, we didn't know where the next sometime the next meal was coming from. We didn't know whether we were going to play our, be able to pay our light bill, our water bill, but we would strike out on a song and say, Lord, walk with me. And the Lord walked with us. Every now and then, we must go back to these songs and be like David. You got to learn to encourage yourself. Everybody don't always say encouraging words, but you got to learn to encourage yourself. Amen. David encouraged himself when he he wrote the song, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, somebody need to encourage yourself this morning. That despite how it is, despite how it looks, despite what's going on in your body, out your body, around your neighborhood, God is still on the throne. Can I get a witness here this morning? Every now and then, every now and then, when things were wrong in our hearts, Amen. We would strike out on songs that would lift our spirit. One of them songs was one of my Aunt Carrie's favorites. Every time we would sing that song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And the chorus says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking Amen. When, when, when times are tough as they are today, we got a hope in God that if we plant ourselves in him, he will be our buckler. He will be our shield. He will be the shade on our right hand. Amen. And the second verse of that thing said, uh, says, uh, on Christ's side, I rock I sand, he says, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then be in him be found, wrapped in his righteousness alone. For less to stand before the throne. See, there's a day coming uh-huh. when the earth is going to burn like an oven. Yes. And I want to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. So when he comes, mm-hmm. I get to heaven. Yes. I'll see my Savior's face. Yes. Unshakable things today. Unshakable means something that strongly is felt. Unable to be changed. Unable to be disputed. And one of the things that is undisputable is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 24, he says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. 
For if they escape not who refuse him, they spake on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. If we don't follow Jesus, we are not going to make it. One of the things that's very unshakable today is his word. Tell somebody next to so you can count on God's word. It's just like opening up, amen, amen, the Bible every day. You can look at it and you can find something that will help you realize this world is not my home. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. Amen. So many times we have put our faith in things that will fail and easily shaken. Money will fail. Relationships will fail. People will fail. Politics will fail. Doctors will fail. Medical science will fail. The judicial system will fail. We need to put our faith in things that will not fail. And I know one thing that will not fail. The word of God. God's word will stand forever. God's word, you can trust in it. God's word, you can count on it. God's word will see you through the darkest hours of your day. Hebrews chapter 12 lets us know that the time of shaking is coming. In the world, when everything is shaken, except some things which can never be shaken. Peter writes in the text this morning, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat and the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. Brothers and sisters, the shaking is taking place right now. We live in a world that's being shaken from change and decay every day. Our economic system is being shaken. They are telling us we own the uh, threshold of a depression. I, don't, I never lived in depression, but some of you were, were born in a uh, depression. My father said it was so poor. Amen. That the rats were hungry. Amen. He was born during the Depression, where he had to take his, his sister's Oxford shoes and cut cardboard and put them in there so he could wear shoes to go to school to keep his foot warm. Amen. In the snow. Yeah, it snows in Birmingham. Birmingham sits on a mountain. Amen. But we are facing that time, kind of time today. The gas prices go up and down. The interest rates, if you want to buy a house today, you better stay in your little hut right now because it's going to cost you more to buy a house. They're telling us that we need to pay off our credit cards because, amen, the interest rates are going up. Stuff is being shaken today. God is trying to get somebody's attention this morning. Amen. Your money will fail. All you do for your family, everything you try to leave for them, it will fail. The Bible said one day this world is going to burn like an oven. And today I want to be found in Jesus. Anybody want to go along with me for just a few more minutes? I want to be found in Jesus. I want to be on that solid, solid rock. Amen. There are things taking place today. Amen. Never before we have the world being ravished by COVID. You can take the shot, have the boosters, and they got another booster coming out in October. But still, people are dying from COVID. We find that monkeypox is ever increasing. We find that morality is at an all-time low. Even some places, morality is not even existent. Some crazed demonic person, amen, is possessed to go get a gun and walk into a classroom and open fire on innocent children. We find that when you walk in Walmart, you got to look over your shoulder 
because you never know who is going to come in and start shooting. Amen. The problem comes today of unshakable things. We find that young children can't even go to school. Amen. They can't, you don't know if they'll even uh, be able to make it through recess. Amen. Black lives matter. White lives matter, and et cetera. But really, nobody matters. We are living in a world today that your life is not worth a nickel. Thank you, Jesus. Our political system is being shaken to the very core. Lies, rumors, scandals, insurrections are shaking and continually uh, are shaking our foundation as a nation. How can a man, after 13 months or so, still saying that the election, he didn't lose the election? When the evidence point, you lost, my brother. Hey, man, you need to go back to Florida and play golf. But you got people following them saying it's not true. It was fake news. Hey, man, they're talking about fake electors. Hey, man, I know I voted. I know I, vo I voted for who I voted for. Amen. It wasn't fake. I went inside. Amen. And I punched the little button and I slipped my card in and it was counted. We are in a world today. Amen. That even the Bible is being denied. Come on, somebody talk. Somebody talk back to me. The Bible is being denied. Holiness is being laughed at. Secularism has overtaken the churches. Pulpits are becoming performing arts. Now you go in churches, they got all these screens and no pulpit furniture and got big old screens and the cameras are flickering and the lights are flickering. You think you're at a concert. But the Bible tells us we ought to come into the Lord's presence yeah, with thanksgiving. Yeah. And right now, I want you to let's try that right now. Let's come in to his presence right now with thanksgiving. Amen. Church is not a place. Church is not a place where we just have a, a bunch of stuff going on. But the church is a place where we meet God. How many of you know right now you in God's presence? How many of you know right now God is right here looking at you? Are you do you understand you just didn't walk in this church this morning just for a building's sake? But the presence of the Lord is here. Come on, just reach over and just wave at somebody. He's here. He's here right now. We find today that heresies, false doctrines, a yes. monopolizing propaganda is being more powerful than people who are grasping for the word. Amen. You got people today that's denying even the word of God. Yes. You got pastors today saying, I taught this wrong. Yes. Amen. Amen. We, we, we find today all you got to do is have a gimmick. They say, come as you are. But God said, you can come as you are, but you can't stay like you are. Amen. God is saying, come out of sin. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not worried about how you come, come, come like you are as long as you're respectful. But when you come, you ought to come with a mind to change. Amen. The Bible says to repent, uh -huh. to be baptized, every one of you, yes. in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are here saved today, you don't want to leave the way you came. Amen. You are coming to hear the word. Something ought to click in your spirit today, in your heart. And I need to change my mind about some things. Amen. Amen. I must look at myself and see, Lord, am I walking with you? Because there's a day coming yes. that the earth is going to burn like an oven. Yes. And there's a day going to come when the very foundations of this earth, amen, is going to shake. Yes. Up in Elgin, South Carolina right now, just below, just below Camden, they've been having earthquakes. At least for the last three or four months. Mm -hmm. Joyce was telling me the other morning, she woke up and she felt the bed move. She said, okay, mom and daddy, y'all be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. On the wall, the, 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 the pictures was on the wall shaking. God is coming. How many of you know he's coming? How many of you, how many of you really are preparing yourself for the coming of the Lord? God ain't playing, y'all. 
we, 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 we want to blame everything but ourselves. You know, COVID, you know, people relax by watching on TV. But you know, the Bible says, don't forsake the sin of yourselves as the man of some of you. Now, you know, we're going to be careful. Amen. We want you to wear your masks. Yes. We want you to wash your hands. But you got to remember the word of God. God has the power to remove COVID right now. Amen. If we would just believe. Yes. God is not asking you to jump off the top of the church to prove you have faith. No. God is not asking you to stand out there in the road, amen, and, 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 and watch a car go around you. Amen. God is not asking you to pick up snakes. Amen. As the word says, they won't, they won't bite you. But don't you go out there not having faith now. You can pick up that rattlesnake if you want to. Yeah. And, man, we're going to have to call the rescue squad. What are what you talking about, preacher, this morning? God's word is unshakable. You can count on God's word. It will never change. It won't change for me. It won't change for you. It won't change for the world. God's word will ch never change. Yeah. Amen. The book of Psalms, David wrote in the 45th chapter of Psalms, verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Yeah. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. You see, when you picture God on his throne, mm -hmm. you understand that God is in control. Yes, he is. Amen. Right now, can, can you see him on his throne? How about let's just bow to our king? Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's Thank you, Lord. come on, bow to you. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the king of glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. When God is on the throne, yeah. he's in control. Yes, amen. When you're sitting in your car, amen, you are driving, you are in control. You have the control to run fast, the control to go slow, you have the, the uh, uh, control to stop. But we serve a God that is in full control of every situation. Yes. Amen. Can I get a witness here this morning? Amen. The problem comes sometimes when we place other things which are shakable things in the place of the throne. Yes. Amen. Can I preach now? Preach, Amen. We must admit, we must admit through this period of time we've been going through, God has been second place. Amen. Only you can make that decision. Oh my Only you can say, yes, I put God to the side. Mm -hmm. I've been worrying about stuff that I don't need to be worrying about. Yeah. I've been concerned whether I'm going to catch the virus or not going to catch the virus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes we place other things. We place money on the throne. We place people on the throne. Let me tell you something. Don't pledge your allegiance to nobody. But the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all yes. hear me? I, I want to go out on, on, on TV this morning. Don't place your allegiance to anybody. Don't let nobody say you support me. You need to support the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he is the king of glory. Can I get a witness here this morning? You know, God wants us to get ready because he's getting ready to shake this country. He's going to shake this world. And I want to be, and you ought to want to be in a place when God start the real shaking, you'll find yourself in the word of God. Sometimes we placed other things in, in on our throne that has taken our very physical strength. We are some of the most worrying people there is. We worry about stuff that we think going to happen. I heard a comedian say, say one time, I don't worry about stuff until stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you're walking in God today, God's will going to be done. He go, it's going to be done whether you like it or not. Amen. Your body going to get sick, mm -hmm. but God's going to heal you. You might even lose your job, well, but God still will provide for you. Yeah. Amen. You might not be able to see as you once saw. But God will give you sight. Amen. Yeah. We got to stop worrying about stuff we don't have no control over and put God back yeah. in his rightful place in our life. He should, be at, he should be on the throne of our life. He should be the one we're looking to. We can't look to Washington. Amen. I pray for President Biden every day, but he can't solve it. That's right. 
You pray for the congressmen to help change their mind. They're all crooked. Amen. Amen. They're all on, on, on somebody's tape. That's just the way the world is. Mm -hmm. But my hope is not built on Congress. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean. Somebody said, I got to lean on Jesus. All right, now I want you to do something. I want you to get that crook out your neck. Sit up straight. Act like you're not at a funeral this morning. And look up to heaven and say, Lord, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to stand on your word. The only way I'm going to survive is I'm going to have to stand on God's word. Amen. Amen. When we understand this morning that God is in control, and when we understand the verse that says in Lamentations 5 and 19, he says, Thou, O Lord, remains forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. When we understand, regardless of what is before us, amen, we understand that we can give thanks to God. Now, we're going to praise God here for a minute, and I'm going to be done. When you decide here this morning, mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about how my car sounding this morning. My Lord. Right now, I'm going to give him the glory. 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 I'm not going to worry about what the doctor going to say tomorrow. Glory. I'm going to give him the glory. glory. I'm not going to worry about how my family feels about me now. I'm going to still give God the glory. Amen. I don't, I don't care how I may be feeling physically or emotionally. I'm going to give God the glory. Amen. You see, problems may arise. Storm winds may blow. But I tell you this morning, you can count on God. Amen. Lastly, I want to say that the next thing is that we need to put our faith in the word of God. The shaking is coming. The word of God says in Matthew, says the man, amen, went out to build his house. Mm -hmm. And he built his house on sand. Well, the winds, the winds blew, the rains came, and his house fell because it was what? Built on sand. Mm -hmm. But he says, be like the wise man who builds his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. the, way, the winds will come. Yeah. The rain will descend. Mm -hmm. Amen. And will beat, somebody say beat, beat. upon this house. Uh -huh. But it fell, not. it fell not. Somebody say it fell not <laughs> because it was founded Jesus. on a rock. Jesus. I'm going to ask this final question. Who is the rock today? Jesus. One more time. One more time. Y'all, come on, speak that name through that mask. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is that rock. The word of God is the thing that's going to keep us. Mark, the 13th chapter, verse 31, puts it this way. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. We got to build our hope on the word of God. That's why I ask you to pray for me. When I stand before you, that God will give me the sense of his word. Because, see, I need it too. Amen. Hello. Amen. I need the word of God to stand too. Right. Amen. Do not allow the de demonic forces of day to get you off the foundation. I'm not talking about what somebody said. I'm not talking about what some human is saying. Mm -hmm. But you go to that word. I tell you what, this is the third year I've been reading the Bible all the way through. <laughs> and every time I read it through, I pray. Jesus yes, sir. talking to us. Yes. We're in the book of Isaiah, if you've been following me along. We're in the Isaiah. We sat, we're starting to see Jesus mm -hmm. is coming out of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah is proclaiming that Jesus, the son of David, son of Jesse, yeah. is that sacrifice yeah. that's going to come and save the world. Yeah. Boy, it's really been exciting to read this yeah. stuff. Amen. That through from, from we started reading Genesis and we are down to Isaiah. And we find through each time God worked with his people. Yes. Let me tell you something. God loved the children of Israel. Yes. 
but he didn't like what they were doing. Right. Amen. He destroyed many of them. Yeah. Amen. But he always found a way to try to go back and recapture his people. Let me tell you something. I read one time when the Lord said that they got so bad, the, the ground opened up mm -hmm. and they went in. But you see, when God makes a promise to you, yes. he must fulfill it. Yes. Amen. He says, I love you. Yes. I want to be your God. Yes. And I want you to be my people. How many of you want to be the people of God? Yes. How many of you want to serve a God, amen, that loves you in spite of what you do sometimes? In spite of what you say sometimes? Sometimes how you have that nonchalant attitude toward God. Somebody ought to be shouting that God hadn't shaken us off the face of the earth. I think about it so time, so much, so much. It's not working. I've th thought about it so, so much in my own life. Times I messed up. So enough messed up. You know, people, when you mess up, people want to have something to talk about. But when you start looking at yourself and looking to the God, you got to say, Lord, I thank you you didn't take me off the earth. That's right. Lord, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm not in Hope Memorial Amen. or Crescent Hill yes. or, or over at Fort Jackson somewhere. Mm -hmm. How many, how many want to shout right now and tell thank the Lord you. thank you? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, oh, we, 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 we thought we was big as bad as what we wanted to do. But when you think about how, however long you've been saved, there's some word in you that when you saw yourself like the prodigal son, he said, I'm getting right now to get down in this slop. And I told you this story. in the kitchen because we didn't have air conditioning. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Oh, I know y'all got air conditioning now, but y'all all y'all from the country. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And on these hot days like today, mm -hmm. we would take that old slop and go slop the hall. But the product of son had gone out. He had gotten off the foundation. He forgot what his father said. And he was about to get down. He was so hungry. He was about to get down and eat that stinking slop. When, when slop get in there, you know, it, it breaks down. So you couldn't eat it. You had to. I know y'all getting upset, but I'm going to just tell you how we were. <laughs> Satan had brought us down to degradation. Yeah. We were God's crown jewel. Come on, somebody. Pray with me just a, a few more. We were God's crown jewel. Yes, sir. And here Satan had us getting ready to uh -huh. slurp the slop. My Lord. But something on the inside told us, young man. Yeah. And that's why when you're on a foundation, when you get to the point where you're down there to slop in sin, something inside of you, your foundation should say, I will arrive. I'm arrive. And I will go back to my father. I won't ask my father anything. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned. And no longer I am worthy to be called your son. Just make me your hired servant. I mean, I told you about in the book of Old Testament how God loved his people. That father, amen, was touched. The Bible said when he saw him coming, yeah. So go get me a robe. That boy who was about to get ready to slop. Mm -hmm. Go get him a ring. Put on his finger. Yes. Get him the best shoes you can find. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to have a party now. My son, yeah. My son. who was lost, yeah. is now found. Yeah. And see, when, when, when you put your faith in the foundation of his word, when trouble come in your life, when difficulty comes in your life, I'm looking at everybody here this morning. You got something going on in your life. If it's not a health issue, it's a family issue, 
Sometimes it's a spiritual issue. You're wondering whether you want to stay in the church or not stay in the church. But when this father saw his son come, he said, my son. He said, he ran out, put his arms around him. We serve a God that despite the wrong that we do, the things that we say, say to yourself, he still loves me. Song says, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God even when I sometimes don't think the way I should think? Sometimes my actions are not spiritual. He still, still loves me. I could go on and on and on, but I will say this. When you put your faith in the word of God, you're putting your trust in something that's great. Yeah. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not like man. Yes. Oh, Lord. I think, oh, I'm authorizing that music. Oh, <laughs> God is not like man. I'm so, God, I'm so glad that God yeah. is not like man that he should lie. Uh-huh. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Yes. He has said and shall not do it. Uh-huh. Or hath he spoken mm-hmm. and shall not make it good. Amen. God's word is truth. Yes, it is. Y'all hear me? He said this morning, there's some shaking coming. Mm-hmm. We get what we call tremors right now. Well. Amen. You know what a trembler is? It's the, it's the little thing before the real earthquake. Uh-huh. Amen. God getting ready to shake something. Yes. And are you found in the word of God this morning? Amen. When you put your trust in God, his power is unshakable. Yes. Isaiah 55 and 11 tells us, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Repeat after me. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. This word this morning is not going out void. It's going to accomplish something in all of our lives this morning if we really understand the fact that God is coming. And when your faith is in the word of God, you can put your faith in. In 30,000 promises. I was researching this this week. 30,000 promises are found in the word of God. And don't you mean, don't you, don't you think that, that God will share one of them with us? There was an old song that we used to sing. I talked about earlier. It just came to me. Y'all remember this? Get in the word and stay there. Be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, get in the word and stay there. Be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, get in the word and stay there. Be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, get in the word and stay there. Be ready when Jesus comes. And they used to say like, say, stay there, stay there. Be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, stay there, stay there. God is coming back. 